Hey everybody, what's up and welcome to the garden. Today we're going to be taking a look around at our little dahlia patch. Uh, before we get into this, I want to say I am not an expert in growing dahlias. I don't grow them for show or exhibition or anything like that. I'm just a backyard gardener with an absolute love for these things. The size of my garden is about 30 foot by 30 foot, so relatively small or big, just depends on your own, you know, circumstances. But we have a lot of dahlia flowers growing. I've been collecting dahlia tubers for about five or six growing seasons now. And I even scored an awesome bargain on eBay this year where somebody was cleaning out their gardens. And I got like 50 tubers. Some of them were labeled. Some of them weren't. So, of course, I'm always on the lookout for a bargain. You can see in this video I have did my best to cram as many tubers into my small garden as possible. And the result was... Just plants everywhere. We had some strong winds, strong storms, hail storms. We've really experienced a lot this growing season. So of course I'm just doing the best with what I have. So let's take a closer look at some of the flowers that I was able to grow this year. Um, we did have a lot of odds and ends this year. This is not all the flowers that I had in the garden, of course. Um, some of them came to me labeled, some of them were unlabeled, so I'm going to do my best to write the name of each variety as they come on the screen, but some of them I just don't know what they are, honestly. I'm sorry about that. I'm just uh, trying to take my best guess at what each one is. But we had some kind of weird odds and ends ones. For example, I had one that turned out to be called Mystery Day. I had originally ordered um, Labyrinth. Instead of getting Labyrinth, I got one labeled Little William, and Little William turned out to be Mystery Day. Uh, lots of just random oddities that are beautiful nonetheless, but um, unfortunately I don't have a label for it, especially a lot of dahlias in shades of orange unnoticed. The first bloom we had was Creme de Cognac, which you see on the screen here. We also had a lot of blooms from another variety that is very similar to Creme de Cognac, called Night Silence. Um, I had one Night Silence plant and as you can see they produced just a ton of really really beautiful blooms. I love the kind of dark contrast on the underside of the petals with the lighter kind of yellowish shades on top with that kind of purple color or burgundy deep purple. Very very pretty. I think this is definitely one that I am going to keep. Most of these plants I just have one plant with a few exceptions that I was able to propagate earlier in the season to get kind of more blooms from them, but I uh, will mention that when it is appropriate. We also have one called French Doll. Very, very beautiful. You can see the difference in the bloom kind of coloration on this. These are from the same plant. Um, as they age, they kind of get a darker pink and that nice yellow in the center that I think is very unique and interesting. I always like when dahlias kind of have frilly petals in the middle and kind of show different dimension as they continue to grow and bloom. Uh, big fan of these peachy pink colors as well. Just uh, definitely one I want to keep to propagate in the future. Uh, moving on, we also have Alpen Parfait. Um, this is really, really pretty. I can't believe more people aren't talking about this one. It is kind of a bi-color, almost like peaches and cream, but instead of that cream color, the secondary color is this very, very pretty orange color, which is a little more pinkish when it first begins to open and opens to a lighter orange. Um, this one is a late bloomer in my garden and just now started to bloom. But uh, nonetheless, I really, really like this one. Really like the coloration of it and really eager to grow more of these in the future. I can't remember where I bought this one, unfortunately. Next we have, this one is called Sweet Surprise. I bought this one, I think, from Eden Brothers, you can tell. All of the blooms on the plant are open-centered and they weren't very double, so that's kind of a bummer. I like the color. The bugs seem to really like this one too. I should also mention that I use DahliaAttic.com to buy different uh, plants to you know find where they are sold. That's a good resource you might want to check out. Next we have Klondike. This is just a simple white dahlia. At least it's labeled Klondike. Um, this one came from eBay. I'm not really a fan of white dahlias too much. I don't have very many in my yard just because the bugs seem to eat them up so much. But again, I mean, I'm very happy with it. It's nice. I'm sure it would look nice in flower arrangements if I were using them for flower arrangements at this point. Um, because let's face it, this year has been kind of a wash in terms of donating flowers and selling flowers and everything. It's just been so unpredictable that 
I've kind of almost given up on it. Um, but, you know, we have to persist. We have to keep going. We have to keep growing our beautiful flowers and keep our heads up. That's all we can do. Next up, we have Margie Day. Um, this one came from Connell's Dahlias. It was, I think, $4 or something. I couldn't resist. And the coloration on this one is absolutely gorgeous. Um, the first few that opened up had a lot of streaking, but later on in the cooler weather, you can see they are very uniform, kind of orange with red and a little bit of a kind of purple undertone that I think is really, really beautiful. I definitely want to keep growing this one. The overall shapes were very nice um, throughout the entire season and lots and lots of blooms with this one, which I am, of course, a huge fan of, you know, the more blooms, the better. I am not going to complain about that, that's for sure. Our next dahlia that we're going to talk about is the, um, called Great Silence. I think, yes, Great Silence. This is what it's called. This one came from Eden Brothers as well. Um, this plant was quite a bit shorter than other plants in my garden, which kind of made it difficult to use for cut flowers if I were going to do that. Um, it might have been because of my own staking issues, because I did have problems with staking this year. But as you can see, the colors are gorgeous. Um, I guess this would be considered a water lily type of dahlia. I'm not really too good with classifications, but you can see those shades of pink and yellow. Um, just very, very lovely. And a, another just really prolific bloomer. We also have Cornell Bronze. Uh, Cornell Bronze is a really popular one. Very commonly seen, just these nice bronze colored blooms. Uh, not much to say about it. Um, I only had one plant that was in the shade, so it didn't really do too well this year for me, but... Next we have Polka. Uh, I think this is considered an anemone type of dahlia, even though it is the anemone type. These blooms are just gigantic. They are so big. Um, the ones I've seen online have a lot more pink in them, but for whatever reason, mine were mostly just white and yellow with just a little bit of that pink that you can just barely see in there. Um, I was so surprised by how big these were. They were seriously like, you know, the size of the palm of my hand. In past experiences, I've, you know, these have been smaller, but uh, very cool. I'm definitely going to grow this one again. I'm not disappointed with this one. Seems like the bugs in my yard are always attracted to the white flowers for some reason. So I had a lot of trouble getting uh, nice blooms if I were to use them for an arrangement, but you know, that's out of my control. Another dahlia that I was really excited for here in the yard this year is the Wizard of Oz dahlia. I had uh, several plants of Wizard of Oz. If you look online, you see these beautiful, very light colored pink white flowers that are almost like glowing. And that was not the case here in my yard. Here in my yard during the entire summer, they bloomed this very, very bright pink color. It wasn't until September that they finally started to give me those whitish, pink, glowing, beautiful pastel flowers. So this is definitely one of those dahlia plants that is tremendously impacted by the weather. If you live somewhere hot like me, um, be prepared. You might see, you know, you might see blooms that are hot pink, like the ones I'm showing here. It wasn't until the weather cooled off into the 60s and 70s that I really started getting these big, beautiful, bald, just like awesome blooms. Um, I think I'm going to keep them around just because when they do finally come true to themselves in the nice weather, they're absolutely stunning. Uh, otherwise, you know, it is what it is. We also have uh, Joey Mickey and some Irish pinwheels. Um, these were kind of hit and miss for me. I know that Joey Nikki is a beautiful variety. I just didn't have luck with it this year. I also had Mary's Jomanda. Had one plant of Mary's Jomanda here growing in the yard. Um, at least that's what it's labeled. That's I got this one from eBay as well. Uh, very beautiful. I love the shape. The shape of the this is just really uniform. Uh, you can see I had a lot of fading in the sun, though. As soon as the sun was, you know, hitting those petals, they started to kind of fade as the bloom began to age, which, I mean, it isn't really a big deal for me personally because I'm used to that. Uh, we also had one called um, Pink Ball. That's all it was called. And when it bloomed, it wasn't pink. You can see here it's very much lavender, but it was very beautiful. Um, not many blooms on this plant, but, you know, it could have just been the season, could have been where I had it, could have been any number of factors, so I'm not going to hold that against it. Really, really love this beautiful lavender. Um, this was also in the mix I got from eBay. 
I have a lot of kind of cactus types or stemac cactus. I'm not sure if what these are considered. Another one I had in the garden is called Charlotte May. This one came from Swan Island Dahlias and it is gorgeous. Look at the colors. Look at the pinks and the whites on this. Now the bugs were most attracted to this one out of all the flowers in my garden for whatever reason, but how could you not be attracted to it? I mean, look at this thing. Seriously, look at these pinks and whites. It's incredible. Um, I had a lot of grasshoppers in them too. The grasshoppers would just jump right into them and eat the centers out of them. Not a fan of that, but it's to be expected. I mean, I'm not bagging the flowers. My garden's not a spray, you know, I don't spray in the garden. So um, I'm very content living with the bug damage and just enjoying my flowers as they are. And flies, oh, it makes me so mad when I take pictures or video and the fly shows up in it. Oh, um, my garbage cans are right on the other side of the fence where I take pictures. So sometimes the flies just show up. And um, so, you know, the more you know, I guess. Moving on, let's just look at some more flowers. Uh, we had Pinhill Watermelon this I think this is Penn Hill Watermelon at least. Um, this was actually labeled Mango Madness when I got it and I've done a lot of looking on the internet and this doesn't look anything like Mango Madness. We also had Priceless Pink. This is one that I ordered on accident. It's actually a bedding plant um, but you know I didn't look. Oops. The blooms are really cute though but it ended up getting completely swallowed up by the other plants. Next, we have, of course, one of the all-time classics. We have Cafe au lait dahlias. Of, I mean, how can you grow dahlias and not know of Cafe au lait's? Um, I bought several tubers for this this year, and I had ones that I'd already saved because I really wanted to build up my stock. In general, the Cafe au lait's, you kind of get these varying shades. There's a darker kind of pinkish purple color. There's a muted pink. There's a cream, and there's one that's almost white. You really never know which of the kind of shades you're gonna get on the plant um, unless you buy the bulbs separately which they're selling them separately now but I just had a mixed bag so I have a wide array of the different shades of Cafe Au Lait blooms that you can see here in this video and these are just so gorgeous and so romantic and feminine looking and um, I can't even think of enough adjectives to you know describe them I love how when you let them open up all the way the petals in the center are all curled up and spirally and fluffy looking I feel like I could just you know lay down in the middle of a field of these and I don't know I don't know I don't have I don't know I don't have a finish to that sentence anyway um, it's pretty easy to see that these are one of my favorites and I took copious amounts of film of these just because I knew that I had to. Also, in terms of Cafe Au Lait, these are easily one of the most prolific bloomers here in my yard. They bloom from about midsummer until fall, and each plant at any time can have, you know, four or five flowers on it, which is always just something really, really awesome, especially, you know, in a small yard like mine. Just getting the most out of what I have space for is so incredibly important and I am keeping Cafe Ole in my garden because they are awesome. Okay, seriously, enough ranting and raving about that. I'm sorry it took a long time to get it out of my system. Uh, but moving on to other things that are blooming, uh, we have some more kind of random orange flowers that I'm not sure what they are, but we also have one called NTAC Mia Lee. Um, I can't remember where I purchased this one, but um, in looking online, these NTAC Mia Lee Dahlias do not look like the other ones that I've seen elsewhere. Now, this could be environmental factors. I'm sure the factors in my garden are much different than factors in other gardens, so it could be environmental, or it just could mean that I got sold a tuber that wasn't actually it. That's one of the most frustrating things that I found about buying dahlias is more often than not, you somehow end up with flowers that are not actually the flowers that you wanted. And, um, you know, I always question, like, is it me? Is it just my yard that doesn't, you know, it's not coming together for me? Or, um, you know, your guess is as good as mine. I'm just here growing the stuff. I'm just telling you what happened. So, uh, who knows? Moving on, another one of my absolute favorites from the garden this year. This one is called Mirth. Um, I'll put it on screen as I've been doing obviously so you can know how to spell that but it is gorgeous this thing is so beautiful and the pictures simply do not do it justice seriously 
when this thing is out in the yard, these blooms are absolutely glowing in the sunlight, in the shade. They are incredible. The coloration of these is incredible. Uh, very kind of shades of oranges and kind of dark red tipped with these bright golds and yellows. Oh man. I know in some of the video here it looks like the colors are kind of muted and kind of dull. Um, but these things are amazing. And not to mention these were again one of the ones that produced the most flowers in my yard. Even more than the Cafe LA. These things um, in September I counted 12 blooms on my one plant um, before I started picking them and leaving them to go to seed and everything. Absolutely incredible. I'm hoping that these will go to seed. I want to save a lot of dahlia seeds this year so that I can grow dahlias from seed. I've been following Cozy Town Flowers online on Instagram and she saves dahlia seeds and grows them from seed and it has been so fun to watch. So I'm really eager about that. Uh, next we have one which is labeled Ruskin Gypsy. This one came from eBay, um, an eBay order that I made. And again, I'm not sure of its true identity, but I'm just going to trust that that's what it is because, you know, that's what they told me it was. Very beautiful. Um, I always like to let the flowers kind of open up all the way, especially when I'm making these videos for you guys because, I don't know, I just like to see the full progression of the flower and what they really, really look like. And like I said, I am kind of doing that project where I want to get as many dahlia seeds as possible. So um, I want that pollen to be readily available for all our pollinators because now that fall is here, the pollinators are going absolutely bananas out in my yard, which is awesome. But the honeybees are actually kind of surprisingly territorial right now. I know I'm rambling. Uh, this one's Mission Gypsy. Uh, not many blooms on this one this year. I'm going to save it, of course, and see. Next, another one of my absolute favorites. This is Peaches in Cream. Not Peaches and Cream. That's a different one. Peaches in the letter Cream. And uh, as you can tell, you can see why this is an all-time favorite. I was actually trying to buy another one of these this year, and they were sold out everywhere. Like, everybody suddenly was like, ooh, I have to have it. And I mean, can you blame them? Do you see how creamy and dreamy and beautiful and amazing these are? Incredible. Um, some of the blooms are more of the creamy color and some of them definitely have this more pronounced kind of very, very light pastel orange color in there. The form is absolutely beautiful. My blooms were a little bit on the small side. That's probably um, my own fault, of course. I didn't do as well with watering and fertilizing and pinching. You know, I should have done a better job. It seems like that's always the theme that I find myself in. Like, oh, I should have done a better job. Um, but we're just making the best of what we have. That's all we can do at this point, you know, is just uh, be happy with our small little garden and do the best that we can. And I think, um, I think that's pretty good. I think that's a pretty good thing to go by because we're doing pretty well. We've got a lot of flowers and we definitely can't complain about that. Moving on, uh, we're going to look for another one of my absolute favorite dahlias that I really love. This is David Howard. Um, this one came from Longfield Gardens, I believe, is where I ordered this from. And they are so pretty. Uh, you can see I let a few of the plants open up all the way and they've got those kind of pretty uh, curly petals in the middle that I really, really love. Um, a lot of the other blooms were a lot more doubled than these, so it really does vary. But what's cool about David Howard, the plant gets nice and big. It blooms like crazy. The flowers are this really, really beautiful orange kind of salmon color that's really attractive and goes with a lot of different uh, other flowers for flower arrangements. And the foliage is actually really, really stunning. Uh, the foliage of this plant is very much a dark purple. Even the leaves have these kind of dark purple tones and they are just such a visually appealing plant. Really, really liked having the honeybees visit these too. So hopefully the honeybees are out pollinating, spreading these, uh, you know, spreading this DNA around my yard um, to the other dahlias and we'll get some good seeds from these. Next we have Ginger Roo. This came from Swan Island Dahlias. I was really surprised by the look of Ginger Roo because I would assume that it was going to be more orange, but they're actually more of a kind of peachy coral tone, coral orange tone. And I think that's really gorgeous. Um, definitely not complaining with the kind of coral color of these. Really excited to keep these in the yard. 
We also have BJ's Dusty Rose. Um, very pretty, very unique. In the shade, they look kind of purple, but in the sunlight, they're more of a pink color, like a true pink color. And as you can see, they're true to the name, very much so. It looks like someone has dusted them. It's not the regular kind of two-tone solid effect that you see. It's kind of like a very fine speckling. Um, like somebody took a can of spray paint and spray painted them is kind of what I think it kind of looks like. So it's very unique, very interesting, and um, very, I don't know, just very different. Next we have Neon Splendor. Neon Splendor is one of the first dahlias that I ever grew here in my yard. So I have a special place for it. Um, it's very different. If you want something that is bright and like knock your socks off, like, hey, I'm a dahlia, look at me, pay attention. Uh, Neon Splendor might be a good one for you. Usually the blooms are just very, very bright orange and uh, lots of them have splashes of these bright yellow colors in it. Another one that kind of seems to glow in the sunlight as soon as they start blooming, which I really like personally. Unfortunately, I had a lot of dahlias that were unlabeled. Like I said, most of the dahlias in this bucket that I'm showing you, while beautiful, um, they're unlabeled and unfortunately I don't exactly know what they are. I wish I did. Um, I'm doing my best to put the names on the screen if I do know what they are, but unfortunately I just, I don't know what a lot of them are. I had a lot of cactus and semi-cactus types growing in the garden this year that are unnamed, which is unfortunate, but I think one of them, which I really, really liked, is actually the terracotta dahlia. I can't remember where I purchased the terracotta, but I have had it for several years. Um, over time, I think probably the name tag has worn off or been destroyed or, uh, you know, for some reason it's not named here. But I truly believe that's what this lovely pink one is. It's not really pink, but kind of like a terracotta color, I guess, like a peachy with a little bit of a purple undertone. This is definitely one of my absolute favorites, not to mention, wow, blooms like crazy, large flowers, um, disease resistant, it's, you know, as long as I've had it, I've not had any problems with bugs or insects or anything like that. So definitely one of my absolute favorites, not to mention it goes so well with so many of the other really beautiful ones like the peaches and cream, just the color palette and the color scheme of these insane absolutely incredible um we also have some other dahlias that are similar i have bristol karma i believe this other dahlia that's just a little bit lighter than the terracotta i believe this is bristol karma um again this is another one that i had that somehow lost its label along the way but these two together are absolutely stunning. You can see that the color variation is just so subtly barely different um, but when used together, they make such a pretty impact. I just can't get over it. I love it so much. I'd love to have just an entire row of dahlias with just, you know, like these four different types of dahlia plants. There's also, um, another one you'll see later in the video that matches these really well. Also, in terms of these kind of cactus or semi-cactus shapes, I have this really lighter colored Dahlia, I unfortunately do not know what this one is at all. This one came in the eBay pack that I ordered and no label, um, just a beautiful pastel pink with a little bit of a lavender undertone. Very pretty. Um, definitely want to keep it in my garden, but I don't know what it is. So if you have any clues, uh, next we have Hillcrest Kismet. I don't think I'm saying that right, but I, I did my best. Uh, this is a large dahlia. It is a bright pink. I know the color here in the shade doesn't do it justice. It is a hot pink with a little bit of yellow in the center and man, it is a stunner. Um, here's another one of those Cornell bronzes that I mixed in here for some reason. Um, I guess I didn't do a, too good of a job at editing this video. We have Sarah Bracken. Sarah Bracken is another one of my absolute favorites. I've had this one for years, four years maybe. Uh, very pretty plants, very pretty blooms. I love the just subtle colors of peach and pink and everything in these blooms. It is absolutely incredible. Um, moving on, we just have so many dahlias to cover here in the yard. Um, 
here's a bucket of several of the unnamed orange varieties that we have here growing uh, lots of pink ones that are unnamed i should also mention before, while we're doing this that this video was uh i did have help editing this video and I am extremely thankful to everyone who contributes on Patreon because you guys are the ones who made that possible. I am so incredibly thankful because, I mean, let's face it, these long videos, I do not know how to edit things and I'm doing the best to kind of get content out to you guys and YouTube seems to really favor these long form videos over other types of the content that I make. So I'm going to keep on doing that. So thank you so, so much. Um, getting back to the Dahlia Garden and getting back to the varieties that I actually know the name of. Again, I'm sorry. Uh, this is Sandia Brocade. Hopefully I am saying that correctly. Again, this is another anemone type. I bought this from Connell's Dahlias this spring. I, I was really attracted to the shades of orange and kind of purple in this. And interesting enough, um, I've learned a lot about growing anemone dahlias this year especially with picking them because the petals do seem to be so delicate and they seem to just fall right off um, if you don't pick them at the correct time which is when before it's fully open but um, these are really pretty and they've bloomed the entire season I think the first bloom opened back in late June and these have just steadily been opening until September and I assume they'll just keep on going until we have our first frost date. As I mentioned, they are kind of delicate, but I think their beauty really does make up for it and I think they would be a really good landscape option if you want to have dahlias in the landscape. The stems have been strong so um, everything kind of points to like, yeah, these would make a good cut flower um, whenever I can focus more on that. We also have Crichton Honey, I think I'm saying it right. Absolutely stunning. Hands down, one of the most beautiful dahlias in this garden. Um, these pictures do not do it justice. These tones of orange and peach and pink in these Crichton Honey dahlias are absolutely incredible. I only have one Crichton Honey plant, but obviously next year I would love to propagate this one so much because it is... It's gorgeous. I don't have any other words. It's gorgeous. Um, these are labeled as Harry Megos. I got these from eBay. I'm not quite sure if these are Harry Megos because whenever I look them up online, that variety seems to be more orange, which some of these blooms do have hints of orange. Like some of them are very orange, but some of them are also uh, have a lot of shades of yellow in them. So I'm not really quite sure if this is an accurate, you know, plant label. But for now, we're just going to take it at face value and say that it is. This one is awesome. This one was kind of a late bloomer. It started blooming at the beginning of September. But wow, oh wow. Look at the size of these blooms. These things are enormous. They are truly are just amazing dinner plate blooms. Not to mention the coloration. I know a lot of people don't like orange and yellow blooms. Um, I used to think that I was one of those people who didn't like them, but wow, do you see, like, look how big these things are, and the kind of creamy orange tones that fade to this yellow in the center, they have totally won me over. The stems are very long, the stems are very strong, um, you know, definitely, I really think I really like these. Um, that's one of the things with dinner plates, especially sometimes the stems aren't very long for cut flower arrangements, but this, not the case with this one. And speaking of short stems and disappointment, here we have the Lilac Time Dahlia. Now, I would be the first one to admit Lilac Time is very pretty. The colors, very pretty. It's a, a very true purple. I wouldn't have described it as Lilac. Usually with Lilac, I think of a lighter color. But um, I would describe this color as very much a purple marker color. Um, but as pretty as these are and as large as these are and as much as I really, really want to love these beautiful purple dahlias, the stem length is a major bummer. Seriously, every single one of the dahlias that I picked, the blooms were way down deep in the plant. They weren't high up on the stem. Now, of course, this could be something that I did or some kind of growing condition related to, you know, things in my yard. 
but I had three of these plants and every single one of them they just didn't produce stems that were usable for cut flowers. I'll probably give them another try in the future just because you know I already have them why not give them another try see how things go but we'll see. Next we have Tahoma Kelly. This one also came from Connell's Dahlias I believe and very pretty very prolific. I planted this one next to the Sandia Brocade. They were about the same height at the end of September. They were both around five feet tall because I did stake these well. Um, these grew in full shade so the stems were a little bit weak and flimsy but I think that might just be because they got so much shade. Um, you know the way my garden is arranged just some of the some of the spots are really really shady and there's nothing that I can do to avoid it but I did love the overall shape of these flowers and you can see the very nice kind of pink and white tones in the blooms very consistent um, it seems like as they age the more pink they become uh, I really like these ones and another one that I definitely think I will give another try maybe give a better spot in the garden and see how they do this is just one Isabel dahlia um, that plant didn't do very well but I'm keeping it because look at the cool color the cool coloration you can see the purple and the peach and this kind of salmon tones in there very cool I'm keeping it I'm gonna try again um, maybe give it a little more care this time Next we have a few more of these uh, kind of peachy orange colored flowers that I'm not exactly sure what they are. Um, in the past we've had some Clyde's Choice Dahlias and we've had Sherwood Peach. We also have Big Brother in here somewhere. Unfortunately a lot of the labels have been lost. But I did want to show you these because I mean they're blooming, they're growing, they're doing well. Uh, we have Pin Hill Watermelon. This is for sure Pin Hill Watermelon as it was labeled very big and spiky looking um, not really one of my favorites but very pretty nonetheless and I definitely want to keep it around in my small yard we also have honeydew honeydew I got this from Swan Island Dahlias maybe five years ago four years ago and it is one of my favorites it's one of the first dahlias that I ever grew um, you can see you can definitely understand why they call it honeydew um, the center is very yellow and the outer petals are this beautiful tone of just light peach kind of orange uh, kind of like a honeydew melon on the inside I guess uh, but definitely one of my favorites I know a lot of people don't like the yellows but the more that I grow these the more I pick them the more I love them it seems like if the plant gets rained on or damaged like this one went through a hailstorm. Uh, some of the petals were actually discolored this dark darker red color and I think it might have been because of the rain and the hail uh, very interesting and something I want to read more about uh, next we have the Islander Dahlia this has been one of the plants that has produced the most blooms for me in the yard this year and I have enjoyed having them so incredibly much seriously um, you know I have one plant that has 10 huge blooms on it and long beautiful stems that are perfect for cut flowers like absolutely incredible amazing beautiful pink tones of pink uh, I have a couple of these Islander plants this year some of them are this darker pink color and another one is a lighter pink color and it should be noted it's kind of weird because they came from different sources they both came from different websites in the past so I wonder if that has something to do with it or if you've grown Islander before and you've noticed a different you know a difference in the tones of pink I'd love for you to tell me about it in the comments um, but both of them are equally beautiful it seems as soon as September came and as soon as the weather began to change these plants just kicked it into full gear like yes it's time to bloom let's do this and they have put on an absolutely incredible show um, another thing that I really really love about the Islander is that they have these roughly kind of frilly looking petals that kind of twist and curl and I think that is so incredibly gorgeous um, I know I didn't really get a chance to make many flower arrangements in the Dahlia garden this year which I'm kind of bummed out about um, but now that I've finally kind of learned more about growing dahlias I'm really really eager and excited 
to you know do a better job in the future. Next we have Shallow Noel. Shallow Noel is another one that is absolutely just stunning. Um, at first I wasn't sure if I would like it because when they first start to kind of open up they're a little bit ugly. I don't want to say ugly but they're a little bit kind of weird looking but as soon as they open up fully Wow, can you say incredible? Do you see the shades of lavender in this and the white? Um, just really, really beautiful. Not to mention that the flowers are huge. These flower heads are enormous. Um, there's really not enough good things that I can say. I did have a few problems with bugs earlier in the season, the bugs eating them. But it seems that as the weather has cooled down, the problems with pests and everything has also kind of subsided. So for the past like month, I've been really, really enjoying just having these beautiful flowers with very little issue from, um, you know, pests and wind and rain and everything that is previously bothering it. i uh, really, really, really enjoying it. Uh, the next dahlia that we have, taking a look around, we have the... Andrea Lawson Dahlia. Now, um, anything that I've ever seen online has Andrea Lawson with a little bit of a purple lavender tinge around the petals. My Andrea Lawson's, unfortunately, are almost pure white, as you can see here. You can see just the ever so faint kind of hint of lavender, but they're mostly white. So in addition we, to Andrea Lawson, we have Elk's Twitter Patient. This one's kind of a letdown. You can see the huge open centers. You can see the color fading in the sun. But we do have some of those kind of stripes that we had anticipated. I'm not sure about this one in the future of my garden. But uh, moving on, we have Orange Symphony. This is another one that's just plain and simple. This came from that eBay auction that I won. Uh, just a simple orange dahlia with a little bit of kind of yellow in the center. Most of them had very open centers, not very double, uh, but kind of pretty. So I'll probably keep them around. I don't know. Um, it just depends on how much space I have, of course, in the future. Next up, we have Tahoma April, I believe is the name of this one. At least that's what it says on the tag. It is a very, very pretty um, purple dahlia with or kind of purple pink dahlia with hints of just that creamy kind of yellow color in the center. You can see the kind of yellowish tones in the center that is very pretty. This is another plant. I only had one of them this year, but it was blooming like crazy by the time the end of the season finally arrived. One that was labeled Mom's Special. I can't remember where I purchased this one, but I did purchase this one this year. It was labeled Mom's Special. If you look at any of the mom special dahlias online that you can find, this clearly is not a mom special and does not look like one. Um, if I had to put a best guess, this might be maybe Ferncliff Illusion or something like that, if I just took a wild guess. But uh, I have three of these plants. They are producing the same blooms. Um, they were purchased under mom special, so take it with a grain of salt. You know, here it is. Um, this is what I was talking about earlier. When, when you purchase from certain places, you really never know what you're going to get. I mean, this is kind of like what I ordered. It's purple and it's white and it's beautiful. Don't get me wrong. I, I might be glad that I got this one instead of what I actually ordered because it is very lovely. The blooms are huge. I love the purple edging around the margins of the petals. It's very pretty. I'm definitely not complaining about that. So, hey, I guess this is, we'll just mark this one up as one of those happy surprises that just happen in the garden sometime. I mean, you never know what to expect. You never know when you might just get a good surprise and uh, really enjoy it. Next up, we have Star Cactus. No, that's not right. Star Elite is what this is called. This was a very cheap one that I bought somewhere. I can't even remember where I got this one, but it's just a nice kind of pink and yellow in the center very simple i'm not really a big fan on cactus dahlias you guys know that i say it a thousand times but uh very pretty and we'll keep it around um i'm not sure i would propagate it or anything like that but i'm not disappointed that it kind of grew in bloom next we have another one that was a late bloomer i only had a couple of blooms this is hawaii uh, usually you see hawaii dahlias with a little bit of yellow in them too but my plant produced all blooms 
that are this white and kind of reddish pink color that is very, very pretty. I'm excited to keep growing this one and keep multiplying it in the future. I think it's going to be really nice to have a lot of these out in the yard that we can use for cut flower arrangements and everything. So uh, really excited to keep that going. Next we have a bloom of Colorado Classic. I only had one of these plants this year. Uh, you can see uh, lots of kind of shades of pink, very much like the other one. This one is Hercules. Now this one was sold to me labeled as Hercules, but all the Hercules ones that I've seen growing online look nothing like this. They're more of a solid color. This one has a lot of white in it. It kind of reminds me of there's a dahlia called Dutch Carnival or Holland Carnival. I can't remember which one it is. Uh, but it's kind of this kind of peachy color with a lot of white in it. So it kind of reminds me of that. And I'm kind of questioning the true identity of this plant. Um, it's very pretty. I, I keep, like, that's the thing I say. It's very pretty. Like, that's all I've got. Um, it's nice. The stems were very weak, but I did grow it in the shade. I'm going to give it another year and see how it grows in full sun and kind of move things around. Um, overall, I like the shade of it, the real, the actual color of it. Uh, but we'll see if it's a keeper or not in terms for, you know, cut flower use and all that. Moving on, we have a dahlia called Good Golly Miss Molly. Uh, this one's a really fun one. This one, I can't remember where I ordered it, but I did order it this year. You can see it's a very much one of those kind of frizzly looking dahlias where the petals are ruffled and curled and kind of out of control. And I always am attracted to those kind of flowers for some reason. I think they're very, very pretty. And um, instead of just being solid purple or solid white or whatever, it has those edge, it has that edging around the petals of a very pretty purple color, kind of like that other purple one that pretended to be mom special but wasn't. Um, kind of the same effect, but with frizzly looking petals. Next we have Henriette, or at least I'm pretty sure this one is Henriette. It was labeled from the eBay order as Henriette, so um, I looked online. It seems similar, um, so I'm just going to trust that it is. But this one's a very, very light pastel pink with lots of kind of shades of yellow in the middle. I do like it. Uh, it's not my favorite. I'm not really usually drawn to these shapes as I've already... Uh, mentioned. We also have Hilltop Lost Treasure is one of the ones that's a late bloomer in my yard. Very pretty colors. This purple, the purple shade of Hilltop Lost Treasure is really nice. We also grew a variety called Nanette or Nanette or however you say it and it was supposed to be kind of a peachy color with lots of red striping. As you can see mine has totally converted back to red unfortunately when I bought it. Uh, those chimera types or chimera types, however, um, a lot of times the genetic stuff in there will revert back to a solid. And unfortunately, that's what happened with mine. So that's kind of a bummer, but uh, it is what it is. We also have Stephen something, I'll put the name on it, of this dahlia. This was a free gift with one of my orders as well. It's definitely not something that I would have picked out for myself. Um, if I'm being honest, I don't really like it at all. But I mean, it was free, so hey. Uh, I'm not mad about it. It's just yellow with a lot of kind of red streaks. I'm not really big on red. I think a lot of people aren't really too big on red. Um, that's really about it for this video. As always, I hope it was helpful. I know I say that all the time, but I do hope it was helpful and maybe it helped you find um, a dahlia that you want to grow next year or maybe just increase your interest in dahlias. Who knows? Uh, as always, you can leave any questions or comments down below, and I'll be more than happy to try to get back to you guys as soon as I can. I um, always do my best to try to get back to people within about a week, but sometimes my work schedule and everything just gets so crazy and busy that I get overwhelmed and I don't get to it for a while, but I do try to get to those. Um, if you are new here and you love flowers, go ahead and, you know, hit the subscribe button, hit the little bell icon, it'll tell you whenever we get... Um, new videos. Usually it's about growing cut flowers. It's, uh, I do a lot of that here, but it might be about growing vegetables or it might be just a random DIY project. So if you like a little bit of surprise, you might like this uh, channel too. So we'd be happy to help. We'd be happy to have you and welcome you into our little garden community. Be sure to share it with a friend who loves flowers, all that good stuff. We're just trying to grow our little flower channel here on YouTube. So that's always fun and exciting. 
Um, as always, if you want more information, you can check out my blog. The link to that is down in the description below, as well as the link to our Patreon, which helps support the channel, like in this video, helped me have someone help me edit. Um, because, you know, I'm just learning to. I'm definitely not an expert, but I do try my best to share what I know with you guys. And, uh, you know, it's just kind of a fun way to spread the love of flowers. Um, the soap shop and everything links are down in the description. I hope that you guys are having such an incredible day. And I'll talk to you all later. Bye, guys.